Hello, I'm John Benson, and today I'm going to be talking about Arthur C. Clarke's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Excuse me. Um, such a classic book, and, and one I've been meaning to read for what, 40 years or something. Uh, I saw the movie back when I was a teenager. Thought it was absolutely fantastic. Was just blown away by it. Wanted to become an astronaut. Wanted to fly in space. Couldn't wait for us to get to space and do the things like in the movie, except for maybe the hell part. Um, and uh, and and I I saw the, so impressed by the movie loved every bit of it and didn't understand what was going on at the end in particular had no clue i was completely mystified as a teenager i was like what is going on what's with the baby <laughs> the thing in the room like it's like a dream sequence and i don't know what's going on uh, i don't know if he's dying and gone to heaven or if he's just lost his mind, like kind of space sickness or asphyxia or oxygen, or he's really back on Earth in some kind of test simulation and whatever. I couldn't figure out what was going on when I saw the movie, but I thought it was just neat as good. <laughs> it was all good. It was, it was so good, so cool to watch. Um, and and I never thought about reading the book exactly then because I was a teenager, but later on I certainly wanted to read the book and didn't until now. But, you know, um, I'll, I'll give myself a little bit of credit. I started getting the movie the, the more times I watched it, about five or six or ten or twelve times when I got into my 20s or 30s. Um, and going, oh, wait, I kind of get this a little bit now. Like, there's the beginning of humanity and now we're entering into a new phase of humanity. That was that was one phase when we turned, be, you know, became from from apes to humans, and now we're going entering a new phase because we are going out into space. I I I kind of picked up on that. I actually was not 100% positive about that. I mean, I get, I, everything I say in comments and in all my videos, including now, I will say are all subjective. These are my own ideas and thoughts. That's kind of what I got to. And then um, I was, it's time to read this book. I ordered the book on Amazon. I read the book and I, it definitely confirmed that it, the book is much easier to understand, I think, than the movie. Um, it, the the book gives much more exposition on what is going on, especially with the monoliths. Um, yeah, spoiler alert, I'm going to expect you've seen the movie and, and things that's been out since, whatever, the 60s, <laughs> this is before I was born, I think. Um, so, or whatever, over 50 years, I, I don't I don't feel bad about spoiling anything. Um, but in the, the movie, it's not clear, but in, in the book, it's not, well, it's much more clear. There's more exposition on what is going on and what the the um, monolith is actually doing, as opposed to just like a, hearing a tone or seeing something after they touch the monolith or whatever. Um, the book explains much more about the monolith trying to um, actively try to um, manipulate the apes to to get them to do things, which was kind of funny. Um, in a, in a in a bad way, um, <laughs> and there's much more stuff like that in here. You know, it's well, and I there's a forward in here by Arthur C. Clarke, and and that explains even more, and you and and more confirms what I was saying about the the general concept about you're you're moving from one phase of humanity into another, and he you know he expounds on that even more in the forward, as in when he wrote the book, it was right as the Apollo mission was starting and, and they were, you know, so confident or thinking, everybody was thinking, or at least he was, but there was so much enthusiasm about getting to um, the moon. And it was such a huge deal. 
And and so you know his you know what he is saying in his forward is that you know for him and this book was him you know saying that that go for us as a humanity to get to the moon wasn't an end point. That's not that's not the 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 biggest dream. Oh, forever you know humans have dreamed to get into the moon. Well, okay, but now we have. No, he's like that's just the beginning. <laughs> so that's that made the movie much clearer to me. Even even I haven't seen the movie again yet. I'm sure I will at some point. But but those memories, I was like, oh, okay, okay, I get this much more now, and what they were doing with this and that, and it it makes a lot of sense. That's what he was talking about. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I was surprised to learn in this uh, forward by Arthur C. Clarke that the movie and the book were being created simultaneously. Uh, it, that is just amazing to me. Amazing that that, that could happen. Um, I suppose shows have tried to do that in contemporary times. And I can think of Game of Thrones that didn't work out very well. In fact, uh, whatever, it had to be taken over by other writers um, because shoots can only be shot for so long. Um, so, so it's really kind of fantastic. And Ar Arthur C. Clarke certainly gives Stanley Kubrick a lot of credit for how, you know, certain parts and concepts in the story, which is also amazing to, to hear. And, and another part in the foreword that was really great to, to uh, hear or read Arthur C. Clarke talk about was how it really is um, the book and the movie is well, was somewhat based on one short story of Arthur C. Clarke's um, and that had to do somewhat with the monolith and you know how the whole book or story is tied together but that was just one short story really set in one small part of the book the beginning and then there was other short stories and then they were all tied together and that also makes sense especially in reading the book that there are these stories that have certain places um, because there's the story with the apes and there's the story with the man who goes to um, determine what the monolith on the moon is and then there's the story about Hal, Hal, Hal 9000, which look, going out to space and what they did in space and the effects and the things they did in the movie um, and the music all worked so well that you know, everything was wonderful. Yet at the same time, maybe Hal 9000 stole the show because you know, I, the, the references, the cultural references that I still hear, you know, that, that um, I, I remember just hearing one uh, and, and being re reminded of one that happened on a, a football broadcast about, you know, um, really, Dave? <laughs> or, or anytime, <laughs> Dave, what do you think you're doing? Anytime even if anybody talks like that and says the word Dave, the references to 2001 Space Odyssey. So there, there are so many references to this book and movie, and uh, there, and rightfully so. It's a classic. It's, it's absolutely fantastic, um, but incredibly dated also. Uh, one thing I find funny about science fiction writers is that here's this writer is trying to think about you know how this technology will be in the future, and going to space and what what the world will what what the technology will be in whatever it is in his case whatever um 40 years or 50 years away but the social parts of it where i about there, there's a there, there's a couple comments about uh women in the secretarial poll which could not would, which would be uh, very awkward today. They're kind of awkward in the book, but they're they would be just reading now. But I'm sure they weren't awkward then. But it's 
It's awkward now. And so that the social evolution isn't really or wasn't really talked about much. Um, he does have some female engineers, but there are far outnumbered by male engineers. And, and virtually all the characters, too, being male. Uh, so that part's not so futuristic. Um, also, there's a, a thing I remember in the book, a scene where they're, they are drinking in the office during office hours. You know, things that wouldn't happen now, at least I would hope. Um, I don't know. <laughs> the, the, um, he does get some technology really kind of right, though. I, the, uh, it was impressive with the scene uh, in the book where um, the, the person, the scientist or whatever, the person who's going out to the moon to check on them to see what that monolith is, um, is reading a newspaper on a pad, on an electronic pad, a news, news pad, in that he can get newspapers from all over the world on this one pad. Isn't that incredible? He got it right. Um, and, and, you know, he didn't know how much more, and that and more. Um, they, there were still telephones. Uh, but, it, but there are some ideas in there that are very good um, and, and make it so, so neat and futuristic, and they did a great job. Or Arthur C. Clarke did a great job with it, obviously. It was a huge movie uh, and, and something that's just is stuck in our it stayed I shouldn't say stuck that's maybe not as it has stayed thankfully stayed in our culture so much it is there's very fun references to it all the time and and this whole concept of a, about a computer um, that commits murder I mean what a kind of bizarre and powerful way of of talking about the of computers becoming sentient that that they've now, that they can now kill. It's horrible, just absolutely horrible idea. But it, it, what further proof would, uh, it's a bad proof, I don't want that proof, but it's uh, it's quite quite uh, funny. It's there, it, or just powerful, powerfully done, that it, the way, the way that is brought out. And in a way, even more so, and I guess more poignant, is the reason or, or how it, how became, how 9000, the one on the ship, became a homicidal or, 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 or um, why he did it or how he changed was because of a lie. Uh, and not even a, con not even an, an active lie that he had to say to the other crew members, it was a passive lie, something that he couldn't tell the other crew members until they got to a certain point. And to cover up that lie, Hal ended up doing things. But it, but it, it messed with Hal's mind, mind, Hal's consciousness. And even in the book, Arthur C. Clarke goes even further than that, talking about you know uh, psychotherapy for computers. So. Um, uh, Pretty good stuff uh, and fun stuff to read. Uh, wonderful book, uh, wonderful movie, uh, uh, and and so great that they were done simultaneously. So you can't say, oh, I, you know, one's better than the other. Or I wish I read this one, read the book first, or you should read the book later. No, you do whichever one. Uh, they they're both fantastic. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed the. The talk, my comments, again, these are all completely subjective, my ideas. I, I try not to read or look at anything. I, I, I did read the forward by Arthur C. Clarke, but I try not, I'm not reading or looking at any other reviews or what any other person is saying about these things. Just these, my thoughts, that's what I want them to be. And uh, they're my subjective point of view thoughts, so they can be completely wrong. Feel free to disagree. Feel free to make a comment. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much.